Hello everyone. Good evening. How's everyone doing? Can you hear me? Yes, teacher. Nice. Thank you for answering. Good evening. How are you? I'm okay. Thanks. And you? I'm doing good too. Thank you for asking. Let me just fix this real quick. There we go. All right. So we are going to wait for everyone else. Thank you for being on time. We're just going to give everyone a couple more minutes, maybe just eight with, you know, five more minutes. See whoever wants to join. Um, I'll start by sharing the agenda so that we review what we are going to, what, um, sorry, the topics that we're going to be doing today. So as I shared, I remember sharing earlier today in the WhatsApp chat that we would be reviewing the midterm test tomorrow. So today we still have some um, information about bi plus gerund and just some additional information about gerunds that we're going to be reviewing. Um, we'll be watching um, a video on what else bi plus gerund can be used for, and we'll be doing the knowledge check and the reading exercise. So those are the um, additional exercises that we have for the unit for section three. And after those exercises, we have the midterm test which we will be doing tomorrow. We'll be doing the midterm test tomorrow. And today we will finish with what's left of section three. I see that we have some more people. Thank you so much for joining. I see that we are seven people now. So thank you so much for joining. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, teacher. Hello. 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 We are already on Wednesday, so it's almost over. Well, well, tomorrow is your Friday with me. Tomorrow is our final day of this um, education week of this English course week. And tomorrow we will be finishing week two of this module, which is super exciting because um, we'll be doing the midterm test, so super quick. Time is going by very quickly. All righty. So I'll continue giving a little bit of time for anyone that wants to join. We will wait for a couple more minutes and then we will start reviewing additional information on, on bi plus gerund. And I also want us to start reviewing um, information on gerunds in general. So I sent over to WhatsApp some information about gerunds after prepositions. Did you get that over WhatsApp? Yes, sir. Nice. Thank you. Yeah, yes. I Perfect, that's awesome. Yes, I'm seeing your responses in the chat right now. So I see that some of you got it. And we'll be reviewing the, those examples today. All right, we have eight people now. So good evening, everyone. Okay, so I think that we are good to start, right? So the reason that I sent over this material is because today we will be reviewing by plus gerund and the different uses that this has. As you can see right here on the screen, we have three different ways to use it to describe how to do something, how something was done in the past, how something can be done um, or could be done as a third option, right? So 
I can learn another language by practicing a lot. I can learn another language by moving it to a different country. I can get a better job by learning another language. And um, what I want you to see is that we can use gerunds with other prepositions. So by is a preposition, right? As you know, we have lots and lots and lots of different prepositions. And here we have some more examples of different prepositions with gerunds. So a gerund will usually go after a preposition when we are trying to say how something is done or how something can be done. So for example, my friend is good at playing volleyball and that's a preposition as well, at. Uh, she complains about bullying. They are afraid of losing the match. She doesn't feel like working on the computer. And as you can see, every time we have a gerund after that. I-N-G, I-N-G. And it's not a specific tense, no es en ningún momento en específico. They are just uh, afraid of losing the match. Not yesterday, not tomorrow, not today, not earlier this week, just about losing in general, right? Do you remember seeing other prepositions? Learning about other prepositions? Or do you have any questions about how you can use gerunds? Great. So I think we can start by watching a video about the different ways that we have on how we can use these gerunds. And specifically, the platform wants us to review how we can use by plus gerund. I see the chat. No questions right now. Okay, that's great. Perfect. I have a question. Yes. It's a rule you use the ING after a position. So it is not a rule, uh, but when you're using a gerund, we reviewed that uh, gerunds go with ING, right? So it's not that you're using the present continuous, you're using a gerund, but no, not necessarily. Um, we, you will have a gerund after a preposition. Yes, my, my question was because I can say they are afraid of, uh, afraid of lose the match or that's incorrect that. Oh, okay. So I understand for this types of sentences, yes, that would be incorrect. Um, I thought you meant prepositions in general, right? Pensé que nos referíamos a las preposiciones en general. Because, for example, this is um, at, is a preposition, and you could say at the mall, right? So as a, prepositions of, as a preposition of place. Pero si estamos hablando sobre las preposiciones when we're talking about how to do things or how we can do something, Sí, siempre vamos a usar ING. So my friend is good at playing. Um, I'm looking forward to meeting you, right? Cuando estamos hablando about how something can be done, how something will be done, uh, or the way that something happens, sí, siempre vamos a usar ING. Does that help? Does that answer your question? Yes, teacher. Nice. Okay, great. Cool. Does anyone have any other questions? Teacher, I have a question. Yes. In the first one uh, sentence, uh, can I say the same for the same um, uh, sentence but without the preposition at? For example, my friend is good playing volleyball. And could I get the same meaning? Mm, 
it wouldn't be correctly said. No estaría correcto, really. You could say that, um, you could say he's really good at volleyball without the verb playing, right? Um, but the preposition, we do need to use it. So my friend is good at playing volleyball. Well, my friend is good at sports. So we do need to say it. Oh, uh, okay. And so I could say my friend is good at volleyball. Yeah, you could say that. Ah, uh, okay, okay, thank you. Yeah, and it would have the same meaning, yeah? But we do need to use the preposition. In some examples, uh, the prepositions are interchangeable. Se pueden intercambiar. For example, you could say for the second one, instead of saying um, about, you could say she complains of bullying, right? So some of them are interchangeable. For example, let's see another one. With this one, they don't have numbers, so I'll just mark it down. You could say, do you agree about staying in a foreign country? Podemos en algunas de ellas cambiarlas. No en todas aplica porque sometimes it doesn't make sense. Um, but some of them are interchangeable. But as you can see, we always need to use a preposition. They are kind of like the connector for the sentences. Excellent questions. Edward, like for the last one, Edward thinks about climbing trees this afternoon. That would be okay, but we are using a preposition. Ustedes van a ver que con el tiempo, you won't even think about, oh, this is a preposition, right? You will just say it. You will know. You, with all of the practice, you will see that it just comes naturally. But that comes with practice, which is what we're doing. All right. Let's review other ways how we can use by plus gerund or prepositions with gerunds. to say how something can be done. Number two, to describe how something was done. And number three, to describe how something could be done. Remember, you could improve your grammar by taking notes. Page 53, exercise nine, grammar focus. By plus gerund to describe how to do things. You could improve your accent by listening to language CDs. I learn new words best by writing them on pieces of paper and sticking them on things. The best way to learn slang is not by reading newspapers, but by watching movies. Let's go over each use of by plus gerund. Ready? Number one, to say how something can be done. For example, you can improve your English by doing a lot of reading. Number two, to describe how something was done. Example, I learned a lot of idioms by watching TV. Number three, to describe how something could be done. One way of becoming fluent is by talking a lot in class. Just remember to always use by plus a gerund to describe how to do things. All right. So as you can see, these are three ways how we can use by plus gerund to describe how some things are done or how things are done or can be done, how they have been done in the past, et cetera, et cetera. Before we review some more examples about this, are there any words that you don't know or anything that you have questions about? Alrighty, so what do you think about this statement here? One way of becoming fluent is by talking a lot in class. I learned a lot of idioms by watching TV. 
or alternatively by listening to music or by doing a lot of reading? How do you feel that you have learned the most vocabulary? De qué manera sienten que han aprendido más vocabulary by reading, by watching TV, listening to music, or by talking a lot in class or with other people? Whoever wants to participate. Reading. Reading? Yes, because I read and I check some, ah, uh, this word, what does that mean this word? Et cetera, et cetera. Uh -huh. Right, I, I love finding new words like that. I, I personally like reading a lot, so it's super cool to find new words, right? Yes. Yeah, and what's the, maybe what's an interesting word or the most recent word that you didn't know what it meant and that you learned? Um, hmm? I, I don't remember. <laughs> no worries. That's why I want us to do some reading exercises. I have a reading exercise for today, which we'll be doing so that we can discover new vocabulary, right? Mm -hmm. um, but that's a super great option to do that. So reading uh, books or magazines or mm -hmm. even mm -hmm. memes, algo que yo recomiendo un montón, uh, now that you are going into the advanced part of the program, is that you could uh, put the settings on your phone in English, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So you have your the settings of your phone in English, so you have to um, use it in English. You have the menu, the options, everything's in English, and you will go into the uh, options and the settings for mm -hmm. your phone, and there will be some things that you don't know, and you will relate or you will connect mm -hmm. the things on your phone to the icon that you mm -hmm. already know and you will know what it means without necessarily looking y eso es lo que estamos buscando relacionar las palabras más que traducirlas relacionarlas so for example when i was doing that i set up my phone to be in english and i saw the little wife um, i'm sorry the little um uh data uh, icon so las redes right so or the datos celulares so i saw that icon and i mm -hmm. saw that it said it's um uh, network data and i was like what's network data but i knew que eran las redes right so i learned those words without looking for the meaning or the definition of it and that's cool so that's a good exercise that you could try if you want to mm -hmm. You know, a uh, long time ago, I bought a, uh, I don't know, it's a novel, but it's a cello hall. It's a, it's a book, it's a, a big book. It's a big mistake, mistake because I try, but it's a, it's a, a complicated because it's just read like a, a line. But in this line, appear a new world. In the other line, appear a new world. But it's, it's uh, pretty, but it's a, uh, at the beginning, it's complicated because yeah. there are many words. At the end, I, I understand more and more, but read a novel or, or something like that, it's a, it's a, a complicated. Maybe sometime, uh, maybe it's possible, it's most uh, easy to watch TV, but no, not exactly break news because it's break news appears from some words are uh, uh, special to the, the um, for example, they talk about the air work, uh, uh -huh. air work. Uh, I don't remember the remotos. They, earthquakes. Yeah, earthquakes. They use some uh, words. I, I, I just, I think, hey, what happened? What say in this uh, topic? Because it's sometimes a, uh, uh, faster, and I don't understand. Some people uh, told me, hey, maybe try to watch TV and uh, uh, see the subtitle, but I don't like it that, that way. I don't know. I prefer just just uh, yes, no. listen and try to understand if the comics, for example, series, but I feel good when I 
I, I watch TV and when I understand, I feel good, really. Yeah, it feels super good, right? And the same goes with reading. So you're reading and you're understanding. And sometimes maybe because the novel had more difficult words and when we're watching TV, it's more of casual language. So sometimes it's easier to understand. And yeah, news are very complicated. Also, not only do they use difficult words, they also go very fast, right? Mm -hmm. They go super fast. So, but that's awesome that you're practicing. Subtitles, I actually, um, that those helped me. So I watched the TV in English and the subtitles in English as well. Mm -hmm. So both things in English. So that way, maybe I didn't hear the word, the, the word, entirely but I read it and I now know how it's written as well so mm -hmm. not only I know how it sounds like I know mm -hmm. how to write it down but I I know right some people don't like subtitles that's fine <laughs> yeah no, the, the other situation is because it's contraction yeah this, this is complicated for me because I I listen a date the contraction is when maybe sometime I when I, I saw uh, or watch a, a subtitle in English, uh, I understand, but maybe you, I, I tried uh, to stop or to pause to check, ah, uh, when I would, I would, or I could, or yeah. I, ah, uh, okay, I got it. <laughs> yeah, right. And we, but you also get used to it, which is great, um, which is what I was gonna tell you next, right? Uh, so with reading, for example, um, it being sometimes you read news, uh, the newspaper, right? So mm -hmm. you could read that in English, whatever it is that you read magazines, just memes even on Facebook, whatever. Um, mm -hmm. And it's not, it's not comfortable at the beginning. It doesn't <laughs> feel good. Um, it, it feels wrong even. Um, and you feel like, oh my God, this is so much work. I'm just gonna do it in Spanish. Mm -hmm. But hey, this is the, this is a thing. Mm -hmm. It's not supposed to be easy. <laughs> yeah. It's not supposed to be easy. It's supposed to be a challenge for you. You're learning something new. Yeah. Um, so it was difficult for you as a child to even learn how to walk but you mm -hmm. had to do it every day and now mm -hmm. you don't even think about it yeah you know yeah. so yeah it's not going to be easy and it's not going to be fun at the beginning mm -hmm. but if you force yourself a little bit if you put in the extra effort right there to do something you don't want to do it will be easy at some point it will become easier and easier until it's natural for you yes you you know sometimes i read tell story Cuentos, yeah. the story uh -huh, to my daughter, and I try, I try read and and uh, with fluency, because sometimes I, I I feel ah okay, maybe I read but not good. Again, I, I repeat uh, and I try because the idea is read but uh, with sense. This right. is it's never or oh, how do you say or con, or con el acento correcto. Right. I try. Mm -hmm. I, I practice this way uh, too. That's an excellent way of practicing because you're making yourself repeat it and repeat it correctly um, with the correct accent. Um, that's a good, good practice. Um, I think it's always worth to invest in your accent. Hay muchos acentos all across the world. There are tons of accents. However, it is always worth it to invest in improving your accent because that way other people will be able to understand us better. Y la comunicación va a ser más mm -hmm. fácil. So, for example, um, I used to do this thing, Josiah, still when I was learning and my teacher would correct me. And this is an mm -hmm. example, right? I would say... Mm -hmm. um, I would say by doing a lot of reading, for example, mm -hmm. and they would correct me and we would say that's reading. You say that by reading and I would go, okay, by doing a lot of re 
raring and I would not pronounce it right. So, and I would keep going and I would keep going by doing a lot of reading, by doing a lot of reading, by doing a lot of reading. So you got to be a little bit hard on yourself. You, I want to do this right. Okay. So mm -hmm. until you get it right, keep on going, keep on going, keep on going. Like, like yesterday, the comfortable. This this yeah. word is a complicated comfortable. comfortable. My my daughter, my daughter is that is comfortable. And I try, <laughs> I try. I sometimes I I speak with my daughter, and obviously she uh, uh, talk English is good for me, it's really good. But she sometimes uh, correct correct me. See? Correct me, yeah. that this word, the, the pronunciation, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But it is good. I, I like it. It's great that you can practice with her. It's great. Yes. That's awesome. I see also that uh, we have Leymar in the chat, and she says that uh, that she has learned a lot by watching movies with subtitles in English. That's what I was talking about. So yeah, that helps a lot. It pushes you. She says that it pushes you to use the dictionary. Uh, that push you to you. Uh, yeah. So if you use the dictionary, that's also cool because you are learning the word. Uh, you know what you can use it for and you can explain it to someone else. So if someone doesn't know what it means, you can help them. And by helping them, you are practicing. Uh, so that's good. That's awesome. Yes. Let's see. I see that there is Byron and he says that he read all the Harry Potter books. I just couldn't get some words. That's completely yeah. normal. Yeah. But the important thing, the important thing is that when you're reading, at least my recommendation is as you are reading, do not move from that page until you know what that word means. Yeah. Because yeah. you're reading, right? And you're going, oh, Hermione did this, Harry did what, Ron did whatever. So mm. if you skip yeah, that word because of the sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no, go please, 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 go ahead. Yeah, the thing is with the Harry Potter's a books, it's that there are some magic words yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> that yeah. it's like what that what does it mean? So it's like <laughs> kind of difficult, but then it's um it's awesome i love harry potter so that's it's, why <laughs> it's super cool i like it i like it a lot too um and yeah but if you search for the word you can find it and you know what's cool that you will know all these weird words that other people mm -hmm. maybe they don't know so now you know something cool mm -hmm. that's yeah. always fun that's always fun knowing weird stuff or the muggles <laughs> right right exactly you see what i mean Exactly. And something that's also interesting. So in order to learn, you need to make it interesting for you specifically, right? So if you're in this course for English Corporativo, it's because you also want to learn um, a little bit specifically about English that you can use for your job, right? Um, which is why I always uh, mention things about something, some additional things that you can use in the workplace or whatever. Um, so if you make the type of reading, the type of listening or the type of vocabulary that you are researching related to you. So that could be if you're a teacher, so teacher related topics. If you're an engineer, maybe you want to, well, I know engineers, they pretty much have all of their stuff already in English, but um, you want to learn what those words mean. If you are studying medicine, you want to learn about medical things and medical articles might be more interesting to you than reading, I don't know, about um, business administration or whatever. So search for things that you are interested in and try to search for them in English. Igualmente, if you're studying or if you're doing a research, you now have double the amount of information. Se han encontrado muchas veces con que um, hay información que solo la encuentran en inglés. So, mm -hmm. and the document is nowhere to be found in Spanish. So mm -hmm. try to read it in, in, in English. Try to make sense of it. 
search mm -hmm. for the words that you don't know. And if you need to do your research in Spanish, then take that information and try to make it make sense in Spanish, right? So that's an exercise as well. Mm -hmm. Make it useful for you. That's what I'm saying. All right. So that has been a great conversation. That's super interesting. <laughs> um, so right Talking now, lot. we have reviewed. Sure. Yes. I, I want to tell you something about this rule. I know about the rule, <laughs> but the majority of the time I forget this rule when I speak, this is my problem. I know, but I forget. And another course that I took, and my teacher correct me all the time because I I forgot. I don't know why, but I understand and I, I know about the rule, but I forgot when I speak. I know, I know. I don't know why. Yeah, and I know it, it can be frustrating a little bit because I know what that is. Why am I not saying it correctly, right? But that is practice. Um, yo les recomiendo un montón to, and this is weird, okay? Another weird thing, but <laughs> yet another weird thing. But if you can kind of narrate what you're doing throughout the day, that will help a lot. Si pueden... Uh, ir narrando in your head, vea, tampoco van a hablar solos en la calle, pero um, ir narrando what you are doing, eso ayuda un montón, porque you will find that you are doing some things that maybe you don't know how to say it and you will force yourself to find a word for it, y eso va a ayudar Roxana as well to use the rules that we've learned sin necesariamente usted estar pensando cuál es esta regla, cuál es esta regla y that's what I want you personalmente. I would encourage you, los motivos que se olviden um, o no intenten formarla, like the, like the little yeah. rule in your head, right? Because that's mm -hmm. frustrating and that's tiring. Pero acostumbrémonos a what sounds right, por decirlo así. So, Rosana, por ejemplo, acostumbrémonos a, a, a venimos y decimos, okay, so I can... Um, start. Uh, I don't know if you cook, but I love. I like to cook, so I can start by peeling the potatoes. And I know that if I say I can start by peel, it, mm, it, mm, that doesn't sound right. So I can start by peeling the potatoes. Yes, we are practicing a little bit. Bite on. I see your hand. Okay, teacher. Thanks. You're welcome. For, yeah. For this part that you said that when we are walking on the street or on our house, it's going to be like, like narr narrate. Oh, yeah. Know. Narrating or narrate. Narrating the, the, and it's going to be like in, in third person, right? And the, this is going to be helping us about the verse and some phrases as well. Yeah. And other thing that I can advise to all of us, it's because... When I started uh, with the English, my thing it it was that I always was was thinking in Spanish, so it's like uh, and then I don't know what happened, but then I stop it, and then that's why that I now I'm here I think, <laughs> and I'm getting better as well. So we can start uh, we can stop with thinking in Spanish and then just thinking like in English and everything. This is gonna be bad. That is the best advice ever. Stop translating. Like translating, it's not gonna do it. You're gonna take a lot of the time trying to translate what you want to say. And sometimes what you want to say in Spanish doesn't make sense in English and vice versa, right? Um, because of phrasal verbs and whatever. So don't try to do it. Instead, try to just, you already know these things. Lo que pasa es que no nos sentimos seguros. We think that it's wrong. So I see like when sometimes you're saying things to me and you look at me and you're like, is that right? And I'm like, yeah, you're right. It's correct. So be, be, be confident. And you know that if you say something that needs to, to improve, 
we will tell you, hey, you can say this instead, and that sounds better, and that's correct, and this is not, right? But try to say it in English. Um, and yeah, you can narrate it in the third person, in the first person. I still do. Creo que me quedó la costumbre. Uh, so, for example, when I'm at work, um, I work in an office. So I would put my computer down, right? And I'll start. All right. So today I'm going to begin by planning this meeting. Oh, my God. I have to send the email to this person. Okay. Let me write that email and I will write that email as I'm saying it. Um, creo que muchos lo hacemos en español también. I'm like, it just helps me concentrate. So you can do it in English and that helps. Es un ejercicio que se pueden plantear for the rest of this week and going forward. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Thank you, teacher. Thank you for bringing it up. Excellent question and excellent comments, everyone. Okay. Anyone else that wants to say anything else before we go into some exercises of this? Mm -hmm. Yes, no. Yes, no. <laughs> okay. Some more topics will come up. All right. So we'll do a knowledge check on that. On by plus gerund. It's exciting. We only have two exercises left, and then tomorrow we'll do the midterm. Almost done with the middle yeah. midterm. Yeah, same thing. All right. So for this knowledge check, we are completing the phrases or the sentences with the information that we have. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight exercises. We have all of these options and we will choose the best one, the one that fits best. So let's start by reviewing all of the options that we have. So we have by doing translation exercises, by reading magazines in English, by studying a learner's dictionary, by role playing with a partner, by watching American movies, and by practicing in your English class, by writing to English speaking pen pals or work pals or friends, or by talking to native English speakers, which is, I was very scared to do that at the beginning. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Hello, Francisco. How are you? Hi. Hi. <laughs> Sorry, I delayed because uh, I am a teacher and I sold uh, uh, many uh, uh, scores of my students. Oh, my God. Because it's mm -hmm. the end of the course. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, notes. Uh, 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 it's low. Mm -hmm. The virtual education is a um, challenge. Yeah. Uh, every, everyone, suppose. <laughs> I bet. Yeah, it, it, it sounds so, so. The system was low today? Yeah. The, um, the scoring system? The scoring system uh, today closed the platform in oh, okay. school, and many students. Uh, write me, uh, hi, este, Mr. Melgar. Uh, of course I need they your did. Help. Yes, uh, everybody. Uh, uh, everybody has an excuse. an excuse. Yeah. Yeah. Francisco is a teacher, hard teacher. Wow. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Probably. I mean, it, it, yeah. Because, because my level is high school, is very hard age. The, the 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 younger is uh, uh, don't, don't, no matter uh, the present uh, do you understand me the present is no, no matter uh, yeah. uh, they thinks uh, they think the future but the present is important for the construction uh, the finish <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it, there's no future without the present right yes yeah what do you teach uh, different 
different signatures, um, uh, history, and nice. um, seminary or method methodology of investigation. Oh, yeah, like um, me methodology of investigation, right? Yes, make uh, the research for social uh, social themes. Mm -hmm. the, so, uh, the, the method of investigation or research. Where do you teach, uh, Francisco? In the Highlands International School. It's in Salvador, it's a bilingual school. Oh, it's that's a, a good school. For, for I need, <laughs> I need learn English because uh, everybody in my school speak English and I try to speak English too. You don't teach in a university? <clears throat> um, three years ago, I teach in uh, te Universidad Tecnológica and okay. uh, Universidad Don Bosco, but right now only in the high school level. <clears throat> excellent, excellent. And yeah. when you when you taught at the university, uh, you taught also uh, methodology, research, all of that? No, in the university, I uh, little courses or seminaries of uh, peda, um, pedagogy, in English, pedagogy, peda teaching. pedagogical, pedagogy. pedagogical studies. Yeah. Yes, and didactic. Nice. And uh, uh, make a curriculum of studies in different uh, different uh, signatures. Subjects, yeah. yeah. So you you Subjects. taught you taught people how to teach. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah that's fine. Yeah, I teach a teachers. You teach teachers, master of masters. That's cool. Nice. <laughs> Thank you. That's great. Francisco, I love teaching. what yeah. do you think about Alejandra? She is a good teacher. <laughs> Very good teacher. Yes, I asked. Awesome teacher, awesome. There we go. Uh, for there example, in, in, in the, uh, uh, when you begin the class, you uh, present us the agenda, and you uh, you have a order or of, of the subjects in different days of on the week. It's it's wonderful. Uh, it's awesome. Yes, your. You're right. Very good. I try my best. Yeah, it's, a, a plain, it's a plane. It's good for a plane. Everybody, every teacher needs a plane uh, all the classes. Yes. Thank good you, for Francisco. You. Means a lot. Thank you so much. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. It means a lot. Um, Thank you. I don't know if I share this with you, with everyone. Um, I am a project coordinator. Uh, mm -hmm. I work as a project coordinator. Um, so um, I work in managing different projects in the, at the company that I work for. So I am a little bit obsessed with having things arranged like this. Like you, This is my everyday job. So I like having things organized. I'm glad to hear yeah. that it's good for teaching. Thank you for sharing that. Yes, very good. Thank you. All right. So now let's do this. Okay. So we have all of these different options. And we are going to choose the one that makes the most sense for this sentence. Right? So you can improve your accent by... What do you By think? watching American movies. Okay. What do the others say? Does everyone think by watching American movies? Yes, teacher. I agree. <laughs> yes, teacher. I, chef, I agree. Cool. Yeah, I agree. Excellent. Wow. <laughs> Perfect. Popular opinion. All right. Mm -hmm. Let's see number two. A good way to learn idioms is by... By the last one, by talking to native English speakers. Excellent. Okay, let's do that one. What do what does everyone think 
Is that no, right? By writing to English speaking ten parts. All right, all right. Someone else. This is uh, by writing to English speaking ten parts. Okay, okay. What mm -hmm. does everyone else think? So we can have a deal breaker. Which one should we choose? What is the by meaning of ten parts? Oh, sorry. sorry. What is the meaning of pen pals? So someone that you have a little bit of confidence with. This can be a coworker. This can be a friend. Someone that you can speak to. Mm -hmm. Pen pal also is used um, traditionally when people wrote letters when we didn't have email and all that. Mm -hmm. So a pen pal. Incluso ahora an email, it, it could be your pen pal, someone you text with, someone you send emails to when you get them back. Um, and the word came from a pen pal would be someone you write a letter to, send it out, you get a new letter. So someone that you text, email, or send letters to. Can, can I change my shoes? My shoes? Sure, <laughs> sure. By talking to native English speaker, please. <laughs> hey, okay. <laughs> Okay. The last one. All right, okay. let's do that one. So you can learn idioms by talking to native English speakers. Mm -hmm. We will review it. So it's okay. sure about that. Uh, one of my friends uh, traveled to the United States and she said she told me about uh, her experience. And she said to me that uh, when she traveled, uh, and she had a uh, um, uh, difficult uh, to understand uh, the native speaker because they use a lot of idioms. She said to me, and and it is yes, they use a lot of idioms. They do use a lot of idioms, and I wish I could tell you like. Let's use a class to learn idioms. Thing is, if you go to Texas, if you go to California, man, if you go to Alaska, if you go to Jamaica, I just recently started working with people from Jamaica. I don't know what they're talking about. Uh -huh. I don't know what they're saying. Because not because I don't understand their English, I do. I just, mm -hmm. the words that they use don't make sense to me in the context mm -hmm. that they're, and those are idioms, right? Depends on the region. So mm -hmm. I wish I could tell you, let's learn all the idioms, but I personally can teach you like California ones. Um, I can tell you about that. Like you will hear that they will say, um, so, you know, gotta is an idiom, but for going to. Mm -hmm. And recently kids, I say kids, cause I didn't even know about this. Like my, my niece told me about this. So, mm -hmm. They say finna for saying gonna, and gonna is going to. So now people say finna. I'm, I'm finna go to the mall. And that doesn't make sense. <laughs> yeah. That's it's, <laughs> yeah, it's weird. It's weird. Yeah. So yeah, idioms, it's, it's part of like the, the most difficult part of it. But TV shows can help you with that. Um, YouTube, I don't know if you like to watch YouTube videos. I like to watch YouTube videos, um, podcasts, anything, but try to keep it a little bit modern. Try to watch something that's a little bit more new because if you're watching a 90s show or an 80s show, I love them. Don't get me wrong. I love mm -hmm. them, but they don't talk like that anymore nowadays. So there might be some disconnect. Okay. Teacher, what do you think the uh, uh, Australian accent? Uh, of the uh, Aussie accent, of the Australian one? Yeah, Australian accent. Because yeah. uh, I try to speak with uh, Australian and oh, it's hard to understand the many words. It is. <laughs> they talk very fast. Yes. They talk very fast. Um, <clears throat> I think after you've heard the um, Scottish and Irish accent, there's nothing more difficult in this world. No, so, Irish accent, <laughs> Yeah, I, I know, right? Yeah, okay. you see? Yeah. What, what is that better accent for 
uh, learn uh, the, uh, the English or good accent for accessibility um, um, for for our <laughs> possibilities. <laughs> Based on Spanish? Yes, but, but Spanish uh, uh, native. Yeah, I would say Brother, um, okay, here's the thing. Disclaimer, mm -hmm. I want to say British. Mm -hmm. okay. The British have a lot of idioms too. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, you will see that they call um, and you might get uh, um some 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 confusion when you talk to other people that are um, used to the American uh, accent or the American uh, English because they use lift instead of elevator, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And words like that. So, and then, but then again, same thing happens with the American. If you go to New York they will call mm -hmm. a lift a taxi. So, mm. yeah, so I, can we get this person a lift? That's a taxi. Mm. Um, so, but pronunciation wise and maybe getting used to, or maybe recognizing the words that someone else is saying it, British, but very London. London mm -hmm. specifically, mm -hmm. because as you get, farthest away from London, you get into the Irish and territory in Scotland mm -hmm. and all of them, it becomes very difficult. So short answer, British. Long answer, no accent is easy. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. You know, uh, uh, to my daughter, sometimes you go, daughter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <okay. laughs> for that reason, I like it, the, the cello hole. Okay, Cello Hall, that accent is British. Yeah. In the movie, it's good. I like it. It's great. Mm -hmm. I would recommend listening to all of them. I had the privilege of having German, British, American, Chinese, Indian teachers. So I would recommend listening to all of them. They're all going to be difficult, but it will be a great asset. Va a ser algo super bueno de su parte si son la persona que entiende el acento extranjero cuando alguien llega hablando un inglés difícil, like an Indian accent or an Australian accent. If you can understand it or it's easier for you to understand it there than for the rest of us, that's always a good skill to have. So mm -hmm. practice all of them. Les voy a mandar un video hoy a, 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 a WhatsApp, ya me acuerdo. Okay, about that, about accents. Okay. No se me va a olvidar. Okay. okay. Um, teacher, thanks. Yeah. All right. Okay, let's do another one. So students can become better writers by... Ah, uh, by reading, in that case, by writing to English in Tempers. The there case. we go. Yes, yeah. I agree with him. There we go. You can become a better writer by writing, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. A good way to learn new vocabulary is. Oh. My uh, student and learner's dictionary. Yes, I study and learn yes. dictionary. I agree. Oh, perfect. Excellent. I like that we're all talking. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Number five, people can become faster readers by? By reading magazines in English. By reading magazines in English, great. One way of practicing conversation is? By role playing with a partner. That's great, by role yes. playing with a partner or your family or mm -hmm. someone from work or anyone. Mm -hmm. Or yourself. I talk to myself. You can learn to use grammar correctly by doing translation. Do translation. Yes, I agree. Excellent. 
Okay. The best way to develop self-confidence in speaking English is. Like right now. Practicing, practicing in your English, English class. English class. <laughs> I like that answer. Yeah. By practicing in your English class. Uh, Let's review. There we go. We're awesome. Right. We're great. We're doing super good. Of course we are, right? That's great. Awesome. Anyone have any questions with this exercise? Or any comments at all? Uh, in, in my case, I, I think uh, maybe uh, we, um, the answer is about, about the platform. But if you ask me, hey, you can improve your accent by watching a American movie? Maybe yes, or maybe by talking to an English speaker. Yeah. Because it's, it's, the, it's the way like I understand or I learn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Like it's personal. This is personal experience. This is based on what makes the most sense on the platform, right? Mm -hmm. But anything, it, it could be anything. Uh, you can improve your accent by talking to yourself otra vez, right? For example, mm -hmm. so it depends. You can uh -huh. put anything that you think is right. Mm -hmm. um, I just saw Francisco yesterday. I couldn't copy WhatsApp link. Yes, um, yes, yesterday I can copy the link. No worries. Let me share that with you. Here we go. I'll share that with you again in a moment. It's good Thank that you. you have it because that way I sometimes send some material. It's in the chat. It's right there. Thank you. You're welcome. So I sometimes send additional things or like the video that I'll be sending today, for example, so that you can practice. I'll send that around 10 p.m. though because I finish my other class. I have a class after this one from nine to 10. So I'll send it around 10 p.m. when I'm done with that one, but I will send it. I won't forget. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's great that you're in the WhatsApp group because we have some discussion there. We send material and you get reminders. So it's great. All right. All righty. And we have completed that exercise. Let us do I know that I'm not sharing my screen, but I will share it right now. Let us review a reading exercise. So we won't finish it. We are probably not going to start the exercise just because we only have three minutes left, right? Two minutes ish, each, each, each. two minutes ish. When I say two minutes ish, this is what I mean. Esto me refiero. When I say we have about two minutes ish. So es como una expresión, it's kind of like slang, an idiom. So I say, I can also say, it'll take me uh, 30 ish minutes. Y es una manera como decir, me va a tomar más o menos. Ponele unos 30 minutos, así como ponele unos 30 minutos, por ahí. Ah, okay. So, it'll be about 30-ish minutes, uh, so not exactly, but around that time. Okay. So, we have about two-ish minutes, um, give or take. Uh, so, I'll just introduce the reading. I'll just introduce the reading, and we will continue the exercise tomorrow after we are done with our midterm review, porque sí me interesa bastante que hagamos el midterm review. Um, and we also have some space going forward to review um, a reading and this exercise. So I want to make sure that we can review the midterm first. So let's just review what this is about. We will learn about... We will read about learning styles. Have you had trouble learning something? Did you overcome the problem? And we will have some 
difficult words such as linguistic, logical, visual, mm. musical, kinesthetic, kinesthetic, mm. and intrapersonal or interpersonal. So tomorrow, with a little bit more time, we will do the reading. We will practice. Everyone will get to read a little bit. And, but that will be tomorrow. El día de hoy ya solo nos queda un minutito. I know that you have to go and I have to go too. So, solo recordarles, trabajar en la plataforma. I think la mayoría incluso ya van más adelante. So that's okay. If you are not, please take the time to get up to date. Y mañana vamos a continuar filling out the exercises. Tomorrow is the last day of week two. So, thank you so much for joining. I will see you tomorrow. Okay, see you tomorrow. Okay, see you tomorrow. Bye, everybody.